Well, I got to work today, so I had to get a shower. So this guy got a little bit of a pork state, a little pork treat, since he's up early watching me get ready. At least he'll be happy about that. And there he goes down to his little area where he likes to chew. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Well, I got to work until about eh, 2 o'clock today, they said. And then I have another audition at 3 o'clock, pretty much over in the same area as I had yesterday. So I'm going to vlog something else over there that I didn't, uh, I didn't really have time to do yesterday. So I hope you guys enjoy it. It's going to be a weird day, but aren't always the days of Jordan the Lion weird? It's going to be fun. When I told you guys yesterday that he burrows under there and makes a nest while I'm taking a bath or when I go to the bathroom, I'm not kidding. Here's the little hobbit hole that he just wormed his way out of. Getting to work like an adult. Look at me. <laughs> We're in Glendale right now. Well, I'm done with work and uh, I'm a little hungry. So since I'm passing by a place that I never really get to go to, I'm gonna stop at this burrito place that I saw on No Reservations with Anthony Bourdain. And then I heard, uh, talked to Bill Burr at the Comedy Store one night, and he was telling me how awesome it was and told me how to get here. So um, I'm pretty much here. They usually have a huge line. Now they just have a few people, so I'm gonna get something. People just seem to rave about the breakfast burritos there. I've been here two or three times. I always love it. Um, you gotta wait a while because the burritos are so dang hot. But yeah, I showed up to work and when I got there, they're like, oh, it's gonna be street parking. And I drove all around the neighborhood. I mean, everywhere I could possibly find. And it was um, street cleaning day, so there's no parking. And after a while, I just called them. I go, if you can't provide a parking place, then I can't find a parking space. I, I'm just gonna take off. And they're like, do it, do what you want to do, and I go, oh, okay, <laughs> goodbye. So I just took off. So uh, I'm gonna get my day started earlier. I'm gonna go ahead and leave everything in the vlog that I just said because I want to show you how different my attitude is now from when I went there and how hopeful I was to now. I will never go back to that taco place because this is what happened. As I was standing out there just filming stuff or whatever, waiting for my order, the lady who owns it and was in there working starts passive aggressively telling the lady who's up ordering, I don't like it when people film here. I think it's rude, da 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 da. So I shut my phone off, put it in my pocket. That's fine. The lady's paying. And this lady brings it back up again. Yeah, I just think, I, you know, I don't understand why they do that in the film and da, da, da. You were on no reservations, lady. People are gonna be here taking pictures. I'm not the first one, I know. Post a sign if you don't like it. If you don't want people to film, say please don't film here. Okay, fine, no problem. No problem. She went on three or four different little spiels, passive aggressively, while I was, I was probably 15 feet away. So when she goes on her third one, when the lady is paying and starting to walk away and she starts doing it again, I start walking up there and as I walk up, she gets quieter, whispering it so she can finish her sentences. And I just say, look, can I just have my money back? You didn't have to be passive aggressive about it. All you had to do is say, you didn't want me to film here. I said, so just give me my money back. What's your name? Starts looking for my food. I go, no, no, just give me my money back. And her son is in there working. He goes, yeah, just give him his money back, mom. You don't have to take this. I'm like, yeah, just give me my money back. You don't have to be passive aggressive. He goes, she can do whatever she wants to go. Then give me my money or give me my food. So she, he's like, give her, give him his money back. She's trying to give me the food. I just go, give me one. And I left. If you don't want people to film in this day and age, post a sign. You were on no reservations. I mean, come on. No reservations with Anthony Bourdain. I went in there so hopeful. I was so excited to eat there. And now I'm just, I want to throw this in the trash. Wrong in this, guys. I know I'm seeing it from my perspective as in the person who is filming, but if you don't, I mean, all you had to do was say, Hey, can you please not film? 
and I would have deleted the footage. It's a taco shop. It's not a make or break for my vlog. I just felt like going there. I thought it'd be fun. If it was good, I would pass it along to people that would want to come to LA and want to eat there. <laughs> but because she was so rude, and because she was so awful and I'll never go back, I'm gonna leave everything in the vlog to show you how nice I was and what I was filming. And actually, I really liked the pet store next door, so I wanted that footage on there, so. Whatever. That's, let me know if I'm in the wrong. This is what I'm talking about with the, when I'm having a terrible day, I change clothes to restart the day. So far, nothing has went right. <laughs> I've woken up, got dressed, my YouTube kept freezing up so I couldn't watch any of the YouTube videos. Well, I mean, I made it through about 10 minutes of one of them and then it froze up. I had to restart the thing and I didn't get to watch it. I went over there, didn't know it was street cleaning day, didn't know that there was nowhere to park on site and couldn't find anywhere to park. So I left and then I had a terrible experience at the taco place. Time to reset the day. Reset. Now to continue on with our blonde bombshell tour. You know what, that's one of the cool things about living in Los Angeles and Hollywood for somebody that does the vlogs that I do, is that I didn't know what I was gonna do today. I had an audition. I really didn't wanna vlog anything. I was really like feeling kinda lazy and just like worn out and everything. And um, and then over by my audition, it's like I can hit one street and do like three or four great locations. So we're right in front of one now. Now this is the house that Marilyn Monroe and Joe DiMaggio lived in when they were first married. This is also sadly the house where they were separated. Marilyn and Joe were separated here and there's a few famous photos of Marilyn having her press conference out in front of this with her lawyer and I'll post those pictures so you guys can see it. This is 508 North Palm Drive. It's a beautiful house. Pretty interesting. I mean, it almost looks Dutch or Danish, that roof and everything. But uh, yeah, think of that. I'm standing in their driveway. They would have driven right in through there. Obviously a different gate, I'm sure. Who knows? Probably a different gate and everything. But uh, I'll see if I can't find a picture maybe of them in front of this house or the time that they lived here, what the house would have looked like. That, that was their front door. That wasn't going to change. Now here's the crazy thing is that, uh, you know, you guys know that I'm a big William Powell fan, and a byproduct of loving William Powell is loving the women that he loved, uh, which were like Carol Lombard was one of his wives before she married Clark Gable. Um, and then at the time of her death, Jean Harlow was his engaged bride-to-be. And, uh, and Jean Harlow, Jean Harlow died here. This is 512. This was the last residence that she lived in. And if you don't understand or if you don't know the story of Jean Harlow, let me break it down for you basically what happened. Get a better view of the house here. Her address was 512. Now, isn't that crazy? She was, she was right next door to where Marilyn lived. Obviously, Jean would have been here much earlier because Jean died in the 30s. But uh, the story is, Jean Harlow's mom was extremely overprotective of, of baby Jean. Her mom's name was Jean and they called her the baby. And um, Jean Harlow had started getting sick and they believed in Christian science. And her mom refused to let her see a doctor. And people even said that they could tell that Jean was getting sluggish. And then uh, in the end, her eyes were getting yellow because sh her kidneys were failing. So. Because she never saw a doctor, never was treated or anything, she died in her 20s, basically of neglect. Basically never seeing a doctor. And this would have been the house that she died in. And here's a picture of William Powell and Jean's mother at the funeral. Her mother lived here. 
and her stepfather lived here. And it was kind of the same situation to an extent of what Mary Astor went through, which is her mother married a man who was a smooth talker and the guy basically was a failure at everything in life and used Jean's success and Jean's notoriety to start up all kinds of business endeavors and try and succeed and try and make something out of it. And they, he did it all with her money, of course. He was kind of a scumbag. And you, you can look at pictures of him and you can pretty much tell, you're like, oh yeah, used car salesman for sure. I mean, a lot of people believe that this house is haunted. There's a lot of different things that people that have lived here have accounted for, feeling things in the night, seeing figures, so you never know, it could have the ghost of Jean Harlow in there. Now I'm gonna go about a block up the street because up on the 700 block, we're in the 500 block now, Paul, we're up on the 700 block, that Marilyn Monroe lived there also. She lived at 718 with who became her first agent. Yeah, it was pretty weird. If you know anything about Marilyn Monroe, you know that she lived with one of her much, much, much older agents. And there's footage that you can find of her swimming at the pool and different things. If you're a big fan, you've seen documentaries. Uh, I think his name was Johnny Hopkins. or uh, Let me check on that. I believe it was Johnny Hopkins was the name of her uh, agent at the time. And she lived there with him. Now, various famous people have lived in this neighborhood. And goodbye, Gene Harlow's house right here. Uh, famous people live in this neighborhood, but I just don't know that most of you would care about Conrad Nagel or Do Dorothy L'Amour and people like that. But everybody knows Jean Harlow, I think, and she was one of the original blonde bombshells, and I think that all you all know Marilyn Monroe. I'm driving right now up through, uh, Palm Drive. Five-hour vlog, easily, just on famous people that lived up here. So I'll hit it street by street, person by person, and it'll keep me and things to talk about forever. I'll be vlogging forever. Check out that house. All right, well I was wrong. It wasn't Johnny Hopkins, that wasn't her agent. It was Johnny Hyde. That's what I meant, Johnny Hyde. But we are right next door. I looked it up, yeah, she, she lived here for a few months. Wow, look at this house right next door to it. Man, that is fantastic. That is beautiful. See that water? That little like pool and pond right up, or whatever that is? Looks like the sidewalk. Wow, that is beautiful. Lucky homeowners there. Here it is. 718. There's a pool in the backyard. And that's what I, that's what I mean I've seen. I've seen the footage of her hanging out at the pool with, with him. Look at that. You can even lease it. And there's the lovely Marilyn walking up the front walk, right where we are at now. That's smart. If you own a famous home that somebody lived in, that is extremely smart to just rent it out. Make it look as crisp and clean as possible as when they lived here and then rent that sucker out and don't let it change. Let's get you a little bit better. It's one of those weird times of the day where it's just so, so shady in some spots that I can't get a whole lot, but man, isn't that something to think about? Another house that Marilyn lived on right on the same street. I looked it up, there's 43 accounts of places that she lived. I haven't even looked through all of them yet but I want to see if they have the apartment that she lived at with Shelly. Because someday I'll go over there and do a vlog from there and I'll tell you some of the stories Shelly told me about living there. There's the Whiskey A Go-Go, where the Doors and Arthur Lee and Love performed many, many a time. Oh man, that toilet went and pissed off the wrong person. Dang. Huh? Toilet seat's still good if anybody needs that. If you'd like to support the vlog by buying any of my merchandise, my shirts, mugs, or baseball t-shirts, here it is. Please like and subscribe.